everybody welcome back to my channel so today's video is the fourth episode in my colour pencil series and in this video we're going to be focusing on five different ways for how you can draw fur and I'm also going to be showing you five different types of fur that you can draw as well okay so the first method that I'm going to be showing you guys is layering and this method probably takes the most time so it's not my most favorite method to use but for this method I am using the Prismacolor pencils and this method is really good for both long fur and short fur but for now, I'm going to be showing you how you can draw long fur with this. So the first thing that I do is I use the black Prismacolor pencil and I use this to establish where the shadows are in the fur. So when you're practicing drawing fur, make sure that you're using a reference photo so that you can draw it as realistically as possible. So I'm starting off by establishing the shadows and to do this I am using pencil strokes that are lines rather than circles or ovals and I'm going in the direction that the fur would be going. And once I did that, I took a light brown pencil and I used that to cover the whole of the area. And to do this, I did use circular motions, but that was so that I could get an even coverage across the whole of the area. And then I went in with a dark brown pencil and I used this to further establish the shadows. So the important thing when you're doing this is to make sure that you're looking at your reference photo and also that you're using lines rather than circular motions. And when you're doing your lines, make sure they're not straight, make sure they're curved lines and that they're going in the motion that the fur is going. Because the fur will tend to have a flow to it and a certain motion that it's going in. There may be certain bits of fur that are going against this motion, but there will be a general direction that the fur is flowing in. So I'm going to continue using that dark brown and the black to further define where the shadows are. So once I finished defining the shadows, I went in with the cream Prismacolor pencil and I used this to lightly go over the whole of the area. So I did this to slightly blend the layers together. But because this is still an early layer, I didn't want to press too hard on the pencil, otherwise this will damage the tooth of the paper and it will mean that you can't apply very many layers after that. I am now adding the light brown pencil and I'm adding this to the whole of the area as well. And then I'm going back over the shadows with the dark brown pencil. I'm now quickly using the light brown pencil to help ease some of those shadows into the highlighted regions so that it's not such a harsh transition and to add more tone to it. So now I'm going in with the white Caran d'Ache pencil and I'm using this to add some of the highlighted strands of fur over the top. So when you look at fur there will be clumps rather than loads of single strands but you will have some flyaway strands of fur over the top or certain strands of fur that stand out more than others. So because this Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil is really opaque, it goes over the Prismacolors really well. So once I added those highlighted strands, you can really see that it's starting to look like fur now. Because we're drawing longer fur, the strands that I'm drawing are longer and slightly thicker, but if you're drawing short fur, then you just need to make your pencil strokes shorter. So again I'm just adding some more depth to those shadows by using the dark brown pencil and the black pencil and then I'm also going to go back in with the white and pull out some more of those highlights. As I'm getting to the final layers I'm applying a bit more pressure especially when I'm using the white and the cream to create those highlights I'm applying a lot more pressure so that I can really get those highlights to stand out. Also because there's a different strength to certain highlights if you add more pressure on certain strands then this will make them really stand out compared to others and it will create a lot more dimension in your work if you've got certain highlights which are slightly darker and then some really bright highlights that will come straight to the front and really pop out. A final thing that I do to make my highlights look a bit more natural is where it's slightly darker but there's some highlighted regions, you can go over your highlights using a light brown or the dark colour and glaze a bit of that colour over the top so that it eases that highlight into the hair a bit more and looks a bit natural rather than making it look like a white strand over the top of a really dark shadowed area, make sure that you glaze over it with a darker colour to make it look like it's in that shadowed region as well. Thank you. 
Okay, so moving on to the second method. For this method, I am using markers as an underbase and then going over the top with coloured pencils. So for this, I'm using Pro Markers and Faber Castell Polychromos. And I'm starting off by using a light brown and a darker brown Pro Marker and just applying this all over the area to create a base layer. And then once I've let this dry, I'm going in with the ivory polychromos and I'm just creating some short hair marks over the top of this. So for this method, I'm showing you how you'd create short fur. Now because you've already got that base toned down using the markers, you've already got that brown foundation to work on. So if you're looking at brown fur on an animal, you'd see the general brown colour and then you'd see some highlighted strands of fur and some darker strands of fur standing out at you. Once I've added hair strokes over the whole of the area, I then go back in with the ivory pencil, but this time I'm using a bit more pressure and I'm applying it to create certain hair strokes that will stand out. And when you begin to layer the hair like this, where you create some lighter general strokes with the ivory and then press it slightly harder to create some hairs that are slightly lighter and stand out more, that's when it's going to look like your fur is in layers, which is going to make it really look three dimensional and realistic. Another thing that you can do to make your fur look realistic is to glaze colours over the top of it. So because this is brown fur, you could glaze over that ivory colour with some light browns or some slightly warmer tones to give it a really natural look. Now moving on to the third method, this is very similar to using the markers as an underbase, but in this method I am using watercolours as an underbase. And this method is very similar to the one that I used when I drew the foxes in my last drawing. And for this type of fur I am drawing more of a ready brown fur. So I'm starting off by doing a light underbase using the watercolours, and so I'm using the burnt sienna and the burnt umber. And I'm not worrying so much about blending these watercolours smoothly, I quite like that rough look because it adds more texture when I'm drawing the fur. So to add the watercolours I am using a water brush for this, and then I let this dry before I go in with the polychromos pencils. So I really like using polychromos to draw fur because you can sharpen it a lot finer than you can with the wax based pencils, and this means that you can get some really fine fur strokes. So when I drew fur here, I started off by using the dark brown colour, and I used this to establish the shadows again. And then I went in with the ivory like I did with the last method, and used this to create some of those hair strokes. And I also used some of the white to create the highlighted hairs as well. And then once I did that, I glazed some warmer colours over it once again to transition between those shadows into those highlights. So this method is really good if you want to draw short, coarse hair. And then once I've done that, I just continue to add some details to make it look like the reference photo.
Now for the fourth method I'm using solvent and the solvent that I'm using is the Zestit pencil blend but you can also use paint thinner as well. So for this method I'm going to show you how you can draw black fur. So I'm starting off with the black polychromos pencil and I'm using this to establish where the shadows are and again you can see that I'm always using lines that are flowing with the motion of the hair and I'm also using a cooler grey colour across the whole of the area. So the black fur that I'm going to be drawing is going to be a cooler black fur that is going to have a blue tinge to it. Once I've established where the shadows are and used enough of that grey tone across the whole of the area, I go in and blend it with the solvent. So in order to be able to blend with the solvent, you need to have enough of the pigment down onto the paper to be able to blend it out. That doesn't mean that you have to apply a lot of pressure to the pencil, it just means that you need to have enough layers of pencil down in order for it to blend smoothly. So what's really good about solvent is that it doesn't damage the tooth of the paper, which means that once you've let it dry you can go over it with a whole new layer again. And especially with white pencil, once you've blended it out, I could apply the white pencil straight over the top of the black, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I didn't use the solvent. Once I blended it out with the solvent, I started to use the white Caran d'Ache Luminance colour pencil to establish where some of the fur strokes were. So I do this in the same way that I do the others, but because this was longer fur, I used slightly longer fur strokes. And again, I used different degrees of pressure to create different depths in the fur. I then used some of the black colour and the bluish colour to help gradiate between those shadows into those highlights. Especially where I've done the highlighted pieces of fur within the shadowed regions, I don't want those to be really bright, otherwise that will look unnatural. So where the shadows are, glaze over the highlighted regions that you've done within those shadowed parts with some of those darker colours to make it look a lot more natural. And I also added some of that blue colour where the highlighted regions were, so it didn't look so flat. And then once I did this, I went in with the solvent again and blended it out, and then I continued to add some more of that white colours and those blues and the blacks to help really define it. Okay, so moving on to the last way to draw fur, this is where I'm using an etching tool to help me draw the fur. And this method is great if you want to draw white fur or if you need to draw whiskers. 
So you can't really see much of what I'm doing when I'm etching, but what I'm doing is I'm taking the etching tool slightly on the side and I'm using it to engrave some of the fur marks into the paper. And I don't use a lot of pressure, otherwise this could tear the paper. And this will take a bit of practice to see what pressure you need to etch the fur into the paper but without damaging it. And then once I've etched in all the fur strokes, I go over with the light greys and some darker greys where the shadows are. And as you can see, when I'm going over the area with these light greys, it doesn't go in the grooves where I've etched in those details. And so those areas where I've etched, they still appear completely white, even though I'm going over the area with the grey pencil. And this is because when you've engraved it, you create a dip in the paper, which means when you go over the top with the grey pencil, it can't get into that groove that you've created. And that's why this is a really good technique for white fur or whiskers so that you can etch these in in the start and then you don't have to worry about keeping and preserving those areas white. However, if you're using solvent with this technique, then you can get some of the pigment go into the grooves that you've created. So I wouldn't recommend doing that until you've tested it out first. Once I established all the grey tones, I used a bit of blue tack and I used this to lift certain areas of colour where the highlighted portions of the fur was. And I also used a white Caran d'Ache colour pencil to help smooth out the area as well. Anyway, so those are my five methods for how you can draw fur. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, make sure you give it a share, which will really help out the video and my channel. Also, if you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe for future tutorial videos. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, I'll leave links to my social media sites and my new online store in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!